You are listening to a Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast produced by Hearing Heart Multimedia in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope this message is an encouragement to your faith and brings insight through the Word of God in your pursuit of God's perfect plan for your life. Please find us online and social media at Redeemed Christian Fellowship for additional broadcast and ministry resources. Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Whenever you're listening or watching this, welcome to the Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast. We are, you know, I'm just going to open up with prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time to study your word, to, to learn about relationships. Father God, we just give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're continuing the, the conversation on the chapter from uh, the volume three of the soon-to-be counseling manual that is going to be published. This chapter is Iron Sharpens Iron. Last week we talked kind of extensively about iron sharpening iron and what that means spiritually, what that means to um, when you are sharp, when you stay sharp, when you help to sharpen your friend. And if you have the type of friend, the type of relationship where the individual can be sharpened and you need to be sharpened as well. So we're going to, like I said, continue that conversation about choosing the right kind of people who can take correction and uh, hopefully you are the type of person who can take correction. So the book of Proverbs, it reveals two classes of people. And the first class that we're going to look at um, is the type of person that is blind to the truth. Proverbs 27 verses five through eight says, open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The full soul loathes the honeycomb, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. It's got to be one of my favorite Bible verses. <laughs> as a Verse 8, as a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. And uh, verse 7 in the Amplified says, He who is satiated with sensual pleasures loathes and treads underfoot a honeycomb, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Now the word honeycomb in that scripture represents the sweetness of counsel and correction because to be corrected to have that type of godly counsel that is sweet because it's for our benefit the phrase every bitter thing is sweet is in reference to rebuke or correction and we mentioned last week that correction can can sometimes be hard to take um, you know it could be hard on your flesh you know whatever um, you know the fr with the friction of, of heat uh, of being sharpened sharpened um, you know uh, metaphorically sharpened um, but to sharpen a knife, there is friction and heat there. But that kind of correction, it should be received as something that will help you in, in the long term. The first type of person, the full soul, and I mean full F-U-L-L, -L, not fool, although that person is a fool. But anyway, um, the first type of person is blinded by pride, selfishness, sensual pleasures. They won't receive any advice because they are too busy fulfilling their sensual pleasures. They're doing whatever they want. They want whatever they want, no matter how it feels. And regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the consequences that their behavior brings to them. Um, and, and honestly, those type of people can't really be helped. They don't, because they don't want to be helped. That's, that's the thing. Whether you're a counselor or a friend of that person, they don't want to be helped. Um, and if you do want to be a friend to that person, you, will have to display what is called secret love. And we just read about that. Secret love, Proverbs 27, five says, open rebuke is better than secret love. Secret love is misplaced love. You know, you're afraid to say something to your friend for fear of jeopardizing the relationship. You're, you're, you're afraid of correcting and bringing that good counsel to help your friend. You're afraid of doing that because you don't want to jeopardize the relationship. Secret love means that you are hiding, you're concealing, you're ignoring a pattern of bad behavior, consistent bad behavior. We're going to address you know, like consistent bad behavior versus one, uh, one mistake. But ignoring that kind of consistent bad behavior, that's called enablement. And, and you know, you would hear that phrase, you know, well, you're enabling that person. Um, and that's where that comes from because you are ignoring a person's bad behavior instead of bringing it to their attention in a tactful, loving way. Because that's what, you know, having good friendships, good relationships is the having the ability to address, you know, someone if they're behaving in such a way that it is damaging to them, then you need to bring it to their attention. 
that's real love. Um, but anyway, I ignoring a, a friend or a spouse's, even a spouse's, because, you know, I mean, that can happen. You know, uh, ignoring a friend or a spouse's unpleasant behavior, the, um, all that does is result in living in unhappiness, really, truly. And, and these things are important for us to understand because when we're looking to establish relationships, any type of relationship, whether it's, you know, a friendship um, or a potential mate, or even a business partnership, a business relationship, ignoring a person's bad behavior and ill treatment of others will eventually get worse and worse, and it will affect you as well. Um, you know, God, God gave us, <laughs> pastor says here, God gave us a brain. <laughs> and, and he did, you know, he, he gave us the ability to, to contemplate, to, to look at, at a situation and assess it in, in a spiritual way. And, and also, um, because sometimes the heart, your feelings, your emotion, I, I, when I say the heart, I mean your feelings and emotions, you know, um, they can sometimes be deceiving, especially if you're in a relationship that you know isn't completely good for you. Um, if you know the person that, that you're friends with and, and, you know, you know that there's something about them that you might not be able to be honest with them, honest in a good way, um, you know, sometimes your your feelings will will deceive you instead of you know, the, the true, the true, um, you know, your, the, the true logic, and now I'm, I'm starting to, now my brain is starting to get off a little bit. Um, <laughs> but basically, use your head, use your brain that God gave you when, a, your, when you are in a relationship with people. Um, because your heart, like I said, the feelings, the emotions, they can be deceiving. Um, and you, what we, we want to be ruled with our heart as in our spirit man when it comes to relationships. Proverbs 11.3 says, The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Integrity, you know what? Integ basic definition of integrity is doing the right thing even when nobody is looking. And so we know that that is not a feeling, that a, a feeling that can betray you because if you're a person of integrity, you're going to do the right thing no matter what, even when nobody is looking. And that kind of integrity, that kind of, of moral, that, that moral compass that you are guided by is how you should be guided in your relationships. Um, so we know that we're not talking about feelings and emotions and, oh, but this person, oh, I love this person so much and they can change and, you know, oh, I just, oh, I just can't live without them. Those are really strong, unhealthy feelings towards someone, truly. Um, and that's, you know, that's not to say that we can't do our best to protect our relationships because, you know, you should do your best to keep a person's faults from being exposed, especially when it's obvious that, you know, that individual realizes they're, that they are struggling um, and it's affecting their behavior. You know, a one-off mistake, a one-off sin, a one-off temptation, whatever, that, that's one thing. And you protect your friend or your loved one when they realize that they've done wrong. Even even when they don't realize that they've done wrong, you protect them. Because if a loved one acts out of character in a moment of weakness, don't hold it against them. They need help, they need godly counsel, they need to be corrected in love. You love on them, you forgive them, you don't go telling everybody their business. Um, you know, if your friend can receive instruction, can receive godly correction, godly counsel about a situation because they wanna get on top of the problem and improve, then protect them, help them. And if you don't know how to, to help them, first of all, you protect them. But if you don't know how to help them, then you can seek the advice of a trusted individual. If you know, you have a, maybe you have your own uh, mentor or a spiritual father or a spiritual mother or a pastor, you know, or a good counselor that you know that you can trust. You can ask, hey, you know what, my friend's going through this and I really want to help them. I, I don't know how. That's fine because you're seeking godly help for your friend who wants help. You know, don't start a group text about, oh, do you know what so-and-so did? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. They really need help. No, 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 you don't do that. You protect the people in your life, especially when they're showing a repentant attitude. Proverbs 17, 9 in the Amplified says, he who covers and forgives an offense seeks love, but he who repeats or gossips about a matter separates intimate friends. I don't want to be that person who repeats or gossips about a matter. <laughs> um, 
you know, it's very much, it's very, it, what, what comes to mind is, is um, that one, the account of Noah in, in Genesis 9, when Noah was drunk and he had passed out and he was naked, he was in his tent and the, the one son, and um, I'm, not re I'm, not re I'm not reading it, but I know, I know the story because you know, Noah has had three sons, Ham, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So one of those sons walked by the tent, saw Noah in the condition that he was in, passed out naked, uh, passed out from drunkenness. Um, and so he runs off and tells his brothers. And the two brothers, they go in and they cover up Noah. They cover up their father, but they do it in such a way they walk into the, into the tent backwards with the blanket and they cover him up so that they don't have to see their father that way. But the thing is, it should have been the son, the one son, the first son who discovered him that way. He should have been the one to cover up Noah and not said anything about it to anybody, brothers, who, nobody. He should have just kept his mouth shut covered up his dad and just, you know what, dad just made a mistake, whatever, I'm just going to cover this up. Um, and, and I believe that it was just a one-time mistake, you know, that, that Noah made. Uh, I don't believe he was an abuser of alcohol. Um, you know, we're not given the history, but that's not the point. The, the lesson here is to protect your loved ones if they make mistakes. That is not secret love. That is true love. <laughs> secret love is closing your eyes to the bad behavior, ignoring deliberate, constant bad behavior. And you know, if you have to ask yourself, if does this person sharpen me or are they taking advantage of my weakness for them? Then perhaps it's time to use your brain and reassess the relationship. <laughs> and I don't mean to be harsh, but this is where your, 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 your mental capacity to, to analyze and assess comes in. Um, because when it comes to relationships, that's not the type of individual you want to be close to at all. Um, if they're taking advantage of your weaknesses by making you ignore their, or not making you, but making you feel like you have to ignore their bad behavior, that's not good. That's not healthy. It's not good for you. It's definitely not good for the, the, your friend or your loved one, but it's not good for you. Um, because if you're struggling with emotional weakness in that area, um, you know, if you need approval or whatever, that that will develop bad behavior. Codependency can result, uh, you know, jealousy, anger, I mean, just a whole host of problems. Um, so don't be that type of secret love person that's blind to the truth. Um, don't be friends with someone who is blind to the truth. Because again, that's that, that, first type of, that first category of person that Proverbs is revealing that we're talking about. Because again, someone who is blind to the truth cannot receive counsel or correction because they don't want to, because they're too busy satiating their sensual pleasures that they're not going to see that the, the sweetness of counsel is good for them. They're gonna loathe that honeycomb. They're gonna loathe it. Someone who wants correction, no matter how hard it is to hear, they, they value it, they love it, they want it, even if it's too tough to hear. Because again, like we said last week, counsel, godly counsel, godly correction, it's not always easy on the flesh, but it's good for your spirit. Um, Proverbs 9, 6 through 9 says, Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproves or reprimands a scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just, teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The word foolish, in verse 6, it means silly. <laughs> just silly. Uh, that's like the fool soul. They're just silly. They're fools. They're foolish because they don't want the godly correction. But a, a, a biblical example of that word foolish is, is someone who is easily seducible, easily seduced, easily corrupted. Um, it defines a person that is mentally and emotionally open to anything. And that just means that they're, you know, they don't want to live within the confines of the instructions of the Word of God because they're just open to anything that makes them feel good regardless of the consequences, right? Um, but it defines a person that is mentally, uh, oh, I already said that, sorry. <laughs> in the phrase, forsake the foolish and live in verse six, the word forsake actually means to relinquish, to loose, uh, to let go. And the idea here is to separate yourself from the foolish. If you have a friend who is foolish, like that, like I said, you have to ask yourself, is this person sharpening me or taking advantage of my weaknesses for them? Um, in verse seven, 
it says that we should not reprove or correct the scornful, which is another word that describes the attitude of the foolish. Because if you try to correct the foolish or the scornful, they will try to shame you. You know, they're going to turn the, t the table on you and make you feel like you're the one with the problem, not them. And I think we've all experienced that, you know, in a relationship at one point in our lives, um, whether we've been, you know, the person trying to bring correction or we've been the scornful because, you know, we're, we're you know, human and, you know, we make mistakes. But, um, but if that goes on, then yeah, it's time to, to revisit that relationship. We're also told that if we rebuke a wicked man, we will get a blot. And basically that means a blot to ourselves. Yeah, you know, sometimes um, a stain or a blemish will come upon our reputation because the wicked man, the scornful, the, the foolish person in the context of the scripture, they are very good at mocking you. And like I said, they can turn that table around on you and make you feel like you're the one with the problem. And then people might see you as the one with the problem, right? Um, in verse 8, it starts off by saying, Reprove not a scorner. The word scorner means a hateful mocker. Someone who is actually out to assassinate your character. And obviously, those individuals do not make good friends or mates or even business partners. Um, you know, for, I'm just going to bring up an example. Say you have a friend who is... Um, W Christian or not, because, you know, we, we Christian or not, um, say they're abusing, suddenly abusing alcohol. I don't know, just, just bringing this up. Um, and, you know, suddenly your friend is drinking too much and they're not at the place where they can hear. I'm just using this as an example because you can bring up any kind of problem that your friend is, is, is having. But, you know, if you try to, to talk to your friend about it, if they're not at a place where they can hear what you have to say, they can easily become dismissive of your concern. You know, oh, I'm not, I don't have a problem. You know, oh, it's not a big deal. I only drink once or twice, so I'm a social drinker. Mm, that's the start of a problem. I'm telling you right now. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, if it gets worse, they could you know, like mock you, really. Like, well, I'm sorry, I'm not such a good Christian like you who doesn't drink, you know. That kind of mocking, that scornful, that, that's, that could lead to further like betrayal it really could um, so we don't we don't want to bring correction to, to those type of people because it's just gonna it's gonna go bad for you so again just make sure that you are making friends who can receive that kind of counsel that that only God can bring um, because in verses 6 and 7 it says that you are to distance yourself from people who portray that very attitude and behavior to mock you, to be like, nah, I don't have a problem. You're the one with the problem. Um, and if you do what the scriptures ask you to do and distance yourself from that person, you'll be safe. And all you can really do is pray and believe for God to turn them around. Um, because at that point, only God can. If you try to do it, they could potentially target you. Again, they could go after your character. They could make you look bad. They could make you look like you know, the silly person when they're the ones being silly. Verse 8 tells us that if we rebuke or correct a wise man, he will love you. And verse 9 tells you to give instructions to a wise man and he will yet be wiser. Teach a just man, one who lives right before God, and he will increase in learning. All of these instructions from God are, are to help us be more successful within the fabric of our relationships because, again, we don't want to be the type of person who is friends with that one that is blind to the truth. And these instructions are to be honored, respected, and valued in the fear of the Lord. Um, because, you know, we're afraid of the poor outcome of our decisions because we want to please God. We don't want to please people. Pleasing people, that's, that could be secret love. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that fear is not fear as in you're afraid of God's retribution or punishment or whatever because he doesn't do that. But you're afraid of disappointing God. You're afraid of letting him down. And so because of that, you were going to deal wisely and make good decisions. You're, you're going to, to be smart about it because you don't want to displease God. Proverbs 13, 1 says, A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. A scorner, someone in that, in that category, is not going to listen to counsel. They don't want to. Um, 
again, don't be that first type of person that we've just talked about that Proverbs is addressing, being blind to the truth, not being able to receive correction, and certainly don't go out of your way to be close, intimate friends with people who, who are like that, who are blind to the truth. We want to be the type of person that we're going to talk about next week. So um, I'm going to... <laughs> Um, see what I did there? I left you hanging. Uh, no, what, you know, second class of person is really just a, a good, wise person. So, but we'll get into that next week. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. Um, we love you. God bless you. And we will see you next time.